السلام عليكم This is the principles of microeconomics course directed to first year Let's review chapter 1 the economic problem and solve some questions The economic problem is a problem of relative scarcity where the available resources are not enough to satisfy all human wants As long as the resources are limited choice must be made and this implies the existence of cost. Now, we can represent the concepts of scarcity, choice and opportunity cost by drawing the production possibility curve. The production possibility curve shows all combination of two goods that can be produced if all resources are employed. Every point on production possibility curve is attainable and efficient. Any point below the production possibility curve is attainable but inefficient. Point E, which is above the production possibility curve, is not attainable. In order to reach point E, the economy has to increase its resources or satisfy a higher economic growth rate. Uh, it could be through technological progress. This made production possibility curve to shift upward and reach point E. So economic growth and technological progress or increase in resources, all of them lead to the upward shift in production possibility curve and this reflects an increase in the ability of society to produce more of all products. Let's now turn to the shapes of production possibility curve. We have three different shapes of production possibility curve. First one is the concave curve. It indicates that the opportunity cost of producing any good is increasing along the curve. So, the concave production possibility curve indicating that the opportunity cost of producing X in terms of Y is increasing or the opportunity cost of increasing Y in terms of X is increasing along the curve. The second shape of production possibility curve is the convex shape. This shape indicates that the opportunity cost of increasing x in terms of y is decreasing along the curve, or the opportunity cost of in producing y in terms of x is decreasing along the curve. So, convex production possibility curve indicating a decreasing opportunity cost of producing any good in terms of the other goods. The last shape of production possibility curve is the straight line production possibility curve. In that case, we find that the opportunity cost of producing any good in terms of the other good is constant along the line. So, in that case, when we have a straight line production possibility curve, the opportunity cost of producing X in terms of Y is constant along the line, and the opportunity cost of producing Y in terms of X is constant along the line. To sum up, we have three different shapes of production possibility curve. First one is a concave production possibility curve where the opportunity cost is increasing along the curve while the convex production possibility curve the opportunity cost is decreasing along the convex production possibility curve and the last one is a straight line production possibility curve where the opportunity cost of in producing any good in terms of the other good is constant along that line. Let's now turn to solve some problems relating to the economic problem. First question, state whether the following sentences are true or false. First one, a society either operates or 
or outside the production possibility curve. This sentence is false. Why? Because a society can only operate on or inside the production possibility curve. Any point above the production possibility curve is not attainable. Okay, the um, any point above the production possibility curve, the economy ha has not the ability to produce a combination of two goods that is located outside the production possibility curve. Second sentence, producing inside the production possibility curve indicates the presence of unemployment in the economy. This sentence is true. Why? Because any point located below the production possibility curve indicate that we have unemployment or a recession. Here, our resources are not fully employed. We have idle resources. Three, point Z, which lies above the production possibility curve, represents a combination that is not desired by the citizen of the economy. This sentence is false. Why? Because point Z is better than any other point which is located on or inside the production possibility curve. But because of the scarcity of resources, the society cannot achieve such a point. So point Z is desired point, but not attainable because of the scarcity of resources. Fourth, an increase in the amount of resources will not shift the production possibility curve. This sentence is false because any increase in the resources of any economy would cause upward shift of production possibility curve where the ability of the economy to produce is increasing. Number five. Economics is a science that deals with, with the problem of absolute scarcity of resources. This sentence is false because the economics is a science that deals with the problem of relative scarcity, not absolute scarcity of resources. Number six, economics is the study of how to reduce wants to eliminate the scarcity problem. This sentence is false because economics is the study of how to use the, the limited resources in order to satisfy the unlimited human wants. Number seven, all combinations of goods inside the production possibility curve or on the production possibility curve are efficient combination. This sentence is also false because any point that is below the production possibility curve is attainable, which can be produced, but it's not efficient because the resources are not fully employed. We have idle resources, while all combinations of goods that is located on the production possibility curve are efficient combinations because the available resources are fully used or are fully employed. Now let's move to the second questions. Refer to the following table to answer the questions below. Here um, we are given uh, a table uh, consists of a production of X and production of Y and points uh, A, B, C, D, A are combinations of um, two products X and Y. So there are a points on production possibility curve. What is required? First, what does the point C mean? Okay, point C, uh, it is a point on the production possibility curve where 8 units of X is produced and 28 units of Y is produced when all resources are fully employed. Again, point C it is a point on the production possibility curve where the society or the economy can produce 8 units of X and 28 units of Y where all resources are fully employed or fully used. Second, what is the opportunity cost of increasing the production of X from 8 units to 12 units? What is the opportunity cost of increasing the production of X from 8 units to 12 units? Here, we are asked to um, determine 
the amount of y that is given up in order to increase the production of x by four units. So are moving from point C to point D, we are giving up around eight units of y from 20, eight to 16. So the opportunity cost of increasing the production of x from eight units to 12 units are the eight units given up from y. Third, what is the opportunity cost of increasing the production of y from 16 to 36 units? Here we are moving from point D to point B. In this case, in order to increase the production of y by 20 units from 16 units to 36, we are giving up around 8 units of x from 12 to 4 units. So the opportunity cost of increasing the production of y from 16 to 36 units is the 8 units that are given up from the production of x. Let's move to the third equation. Uh, consider the following production possibility curve. The required is to determine the amount, uh, the attainable, efficient, inefficient, and unattainable points and state y. Number two, the economy is in a recession. Which of points will be produced? Third, when point B is attainable. Fourth, what is the opportunity cost of increasing production of X from 3 units to 4 units? Okay, um, any points along the production possibility curve are both attainable, which can be produced, and efficient, where all resources are fully used or fully employed. Any point located inside or below the production possibility curve, just like point A, is attainable because we can produce this point, but it is not efficient, it is inefficient point because we have here either resources. So the attainable points are point A, point C, and point D. Attainable means it can be produced. Point B is unattainable. It is a desired point, but the society or the economy has no ability to produce more of X and Y or to reach B because of limited resources. Point C and point D, because they are located on the production possibility curve, both of them are efficient points. Why? Because all resources are fully employed. Um, which point indicates that we have a recession or unemployment? This point is point A. Any point that is located inside or below the production possibility curve indicates that we have either resources or the economy is in a recession. How can this economy reach to point B? Economy can increase its ability to produce more of goods, more of X and more of Y, and to reach point B by three ways. By increasing the amount of resources, by uh, adopting higher technology, and achieving higher economic growth rate. In this case, production possibility curve will shift upward and reach to point B. In that cases, point B would be attainable. Last required point is he asked me to calculate the opportunity cost of increasing the production of X by one unit. In this case, would we would uh, adopt the following formula. The opportunity cost of increasing the production of X by one unit equals the quantity given up from Y, which is three units, over the quantity obtained from X, which is one unit, which is equal three. Uh, it could be uh, it is the minus because we have a negative relationship between the production of X and production of Y. 
it means that in order to increase the production of X by one unit, we have to give up or decrease the production of Y by three units. This is the opportunity cost of increasing the production of X by one unit. Next question gives me a diagram about production stability curve of a given economy and he asked me to calculate the opportunity cost of increasing the production of X from 8 units to 12 units and calculate the opportunity cost of producing just one unit of X. The third, calculate the opportunity cost of increasing the production of Y from 2 units to 4 units. And the last required item is to calculate the opportunity cost of producing 1 unit of Y. In order to answer the questions, we have to understand the difference between the, the opportunity cost of increasing x by 1 unit and the opportunity cost of increasing x by 4 units as shown in this diagram. Moving from A to B indicate that uh, we increase the production of x from 8 units to 12 units. So production of x increased by 4 units. In order to increase x by, one, uh, by 4 units, we have to decrease the production of y by 2 units from 4 to 2. So moving from A to B, indicate that 4 units of x is increased and 2 units of y is decreased. So the opportunity cost of increasing the production of X from 8 to 12 units is the two units of Y that are given up in order to increase X by 4 units. Again, the opportunity cost of increasing the production of X by 4 units is the two units that we give up from Y in order to increase X. While the opportunity cost of producing one unit of X is get by applying the following formula. It equals the quantity given up from Y over the quantity obtained from X, which is equal half. So in order to increase X by one unit, we have to decrease the production of Y by half unit. By the same token, in order to get the opportunity cost of increasing y by two units, we here we are moving from point B to point A. In this case, in order to increase y by two units, we have to give up four units of x. So the opportunity cost of increasing the production of y by Two units is the four units of X that are given up or decreased. While the opportunity cost of producing just one unit of Y is get by applying the formula, which is equal quantity given up from X over the quantity obtained from Y. When we are moving from B to A, we give up four units of X in order to increase the production of Y by two units. So the opportunity cost of producing one unit of Y equals two units of X.